this opportunity to come again be with the believers at the Beth Eden Church at this auspicious occasion. What a pleasure it is to see so many familiar faces. Uh, I'm grateful to have Lady Heather Elise here with us tonight. Will you wave your hand? You, you, and you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good for us to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I echo the sentiments of one Delvin Atchison, pastor of the West Side Church in Louisville, Texas. Y'all brought a country preacher uptown. Uh, I know we've gathered for a banquet, but can we have some church? If you brought your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew, the 21st chapter. And we'll read the 10th verse. Matthew, the 21st chapter. And we'll read the 10th verse. When you have it, signify by saying amen. Thank you to Brother Campbell for making sure that I knew the place and I knew the time. Herein is the reading of the word of God. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in an uproar saying, who is this? This is the word of God. God be praised. As it is our time to share together, think with me as I talk about the resume of the man. The resume of the man. The resume of the man. He must have been of some importance because they carpeted the dirt road with palm branches and personal clothing as he rolled in on the bare back of an unbroken donkey. Hysteria stirred in the crowd because of the man on the back of the donkey. The hysteria rippled through the crowd until it was balled up into one simple question. Mm -hmm. Who is the man? Yeah. Yeah. You would think that someone of his esteem, someone of his acclaim could do without the formalities of a resume. Mm -hmm. What a shame to be emotionally excited only to be aroused in ignorance. As quiet as it's kept Beth Eden, this crowd and the modern church have much similarities. Today's church is filled with emotion. Today's church is filled with hysteria. Today's church has no issue with shouting. But can we answer the question? Who is the man? Pastor Bryce, to properly answer the question, I felt it fitting to piece together a resume to leave no doubt as to who the man is. Yeah. Right. Resumes are nothing new. Mm -hmm. They go as far back as 1482. Yeah. Yeah. Romantics credit Leonardo da Vinci for birthing the contemporary form 
of the resume. He wrote a letter to Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan, advertising his inventions. Time and technology have advanced the resume, but the intent is still the same. A resume, church, tells of who you are. A resume tells of what you've done. A resume tells of what you're capable of. And a resume tells of what you stand for. A man of our text as a resume. Yeah. It's a resume that should be known around the world. He was a man who was intriguing. He was a man who was infuriating. He was a man who was influential. A man who took a diverse group of disciples and literally turned the entire world upside down because of his stir and because of his status his resume is essential but then the church we must also be cautious of who we ask because if we ask the wrong person, they will provide the wrong answers about the man. Have you ever had an instance where you needed information? So you went searching and you were scrolling through your contact list and you come across names that you should ask. You come across names that you could ask. And you even come across names that you can't ask. I must caution you, if you're going to ask about the man, be careful. If you ask the Pharisees, they say the man is a devil. But he is no devil. Be careful. If you ask the high priest, they will say the man is a fraud. But there's nothing fraudulent about this man. Yeah. Even Mark 3.21 tells us that his own people said that he was deranged. But this man is not insane. Yeah. Yeah. To clear any contamination of his character. Yeah. The Holy Spirit has led me to submit a resume to you to identify the man. Daniel Howden says that most personal resumes are filled with twists. Most personal resumes are filled with lies and exaggerations. So as I stand before you tonight, Beth Eden, I promise to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Uh, his name. Let's start there. His name is revealed to us in the 11th verse. The verse says that this is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Church names are important. A name specifies who a person is. People are distinguished by names. They have birth names. They have surnames. They have maiden names. And sometimes they even have nicknames. And don't you know Jesus Christ of Nazareth has some nicknames? The disciples called him Master. Nicodemus called him Rabbi. Peter called him Lord. The man of our text is Jesus. But we must also ask the question, what is so important about the man Jesus' name? James A. Irvin Sr., the pastor of the Iron Wheel Baptist Church in Nacogdoches, Texas, comments here and he says, the unanimous testimony of scripture is that in the name of Jesus, 
Christ, the forgiveness of sins and the salvation of the world are offered to all people. Hear the testimony of scripture. Peter declares that there is no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. Paul sums it up when he says, therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. His name is Jesus. Maybe you don't call him master. Maybe you don't call him a rabbi, but maybe you call him bread when you're hungry. Maybe you call him water when you're thirsty. Maybe you call him friend when you're friendless. Maybe you call him shelter in the time of storm. Maybe you call him a rock in the weary land. I even heard grandmama say he's a leading pulse. His name is Jesus. That's his name. Consider now his fame. His renown geographically was noise abroad. Was he known in Cana of Galilee? Well, yes. It was in Cana where he turned water into wine. Was he known in Samaria? Well, yes, it was in Samaria. He encountered a woman at the well. And when she returned to town, she told the people to come and meet a man. Was he known in Bethany? Well, yes, because there in Bethany was the place he raised Lazarus from the dead. Was he known in Jerusalem? The 21st chapter of Matthew says yes. As he rides into Jerusalem on the bare back of an unbroken donkey, they lauded him. They praised him. They worshiped him. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But there is yet one question we still have to ask. Is there anybody here at this beautiful Beth Eden banquet that knows who the man is? I know you may know his name, but is there anybody here who don't mind being a witness that I know the man? His name has been revealed. His fame has been recorded. Now consider his aim. History has cemented Jesus' time on earth as a reality. However, the purpose of his sojourn for some is still unknown. So why did Jesus come? What was his purpose? What was his mission? What was his aim? To use the delightful terminology of the one pastor, Jerry D. Black, he says, the record tells us, though he controlled nature, his aim was not to be a scientist. Though he cured incurable diseases, his aim was not to be a physician. Though he was a friend to sinners, his aim was not to be an attorney. I wonder, is there anybody in here who wants to know what the aim of Christ is? It's there in Mark 10 and 45. 
we discover the aim of Christ. He says, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Paul elevates his aim in 1 Timothy 1, 15. He says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. To be clear, the aim of Christ is that sinners like you, sinners like me, can be saved. I know why you're looking at me like that. Don't you look at me like that. The Bible says that there is none righteous. No, not one. The Bible says all And the darkness cannot 
not overtake it. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I see the confusion, make a substitution. Instead of the word, put Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Jesus was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, Jesus. And without him, Jesus was not anything made that was made. In Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overtake it. And verse 14, and Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth that is his claim that I and the father are one after John lifts Jesus up from the waters of the jar God gives his pronouncement he says this is my beloved son of whom I am well pleased. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the good shepherd. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the bread of life. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the light of the world. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the true vine. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the door. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the resurrection. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the life. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the way. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the alpha. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the omega. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the first. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the last. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the root and the offspring of David. Hear the claim of Christ. I am the father of one. And you know what that means. He's the man that will go up to Calvary and I And they stress him wide out of Calvary. He hung and he bled. He stayed there all day long. They tell me 
What a resume. What a resume. Amen. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Brother Pastor. Amen. All I can say is ditto. Amen. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we agree with God, not that God needs our agreement, but we must agree with Him. Amen. Because He's faithful and He's just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a guarantee. Amen. There may be somebody here tonight. If I look over the room, I know y'all saved. I know y'all saved. But maybe your fellowship is out of whack. That's what this scripture.